Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, I am ECC Disha Chauhan, a proud Fintrama and your faculty for business and technology. Welcome. Welcome everyone to a brand new session. So in today's session we will be talking about control, security and audit. We'll try to understand what is an internal control. Why do companies need internal controls as such? We'll talk about the control environment. And in the audit side, we'll talk about what is an internal audit, what are its features, and how is it different from an external audit. So before we start with that, let's have a quick recap of a previous session. So in our last session, if you remember, I hope, we talked about what is accounting. We studied about the chapter role of accounting, wherein we firstly discussed what is accounting. Accounting is basically recording, analyzing and summarizing of your transactions. Then we talked about what are the various qualities of having a good accounting information, wherein we saw that you know, your accounting information needs to be reliable. It needs to be accurate and also complete uh, in order to be considered as a good uh, quality. Uh, and of course, there were other uh, characteristics as well. Then we talked about the regulatory system. Here we saw that basically you have a regulatory system or a framework which contains some rules or guidelines or procedures in place which your organizations will have to follow. Wherein we saw the company law, we talked about the European Union, we talked about GAAP, which was a generally accepted accounting practice. Also, we talked about the IASB, the International Accounting Standards Board, and we saw how IASB issues basically an IFRS. Then we talked about financial system, wherein we saw various systems like the purchasing system, sales, cash and payroll. So we saw how each of these systems work and we saw why is it important to have some controls in place. So most of the system we saw that we have segregation of duty as a control and why is it important so that you know there's safeguard of your assets and as such no fraud is happening to prevent basically any fraud from happening. So we talked about what is the purpose of then these organization controls, which was safeguarding our assets, preventing or detecting any error or fraud from occurring in the first place. Or if something has happened, then you will probably want to, you know, detect it at an early stage rather than at a later stage. Then we talked about automated systems and how they are different from manual systems. So automated system we saw that its features that there is unique uh, uniform processing of your transactions however it also leads to you know uh, dangers of uh, that you know you could lose your data or it can get easily corrupted now how is it different from your manual systems we saw that your manual system tend to be more slower and you know they are more bulky of course because you have to store all these documents and paper at a place whereas in your computer you can store a large amount and huge volume of data in just one uh, computer. And finally, we talked about relationship between accounting and the various business function, wherein we saw how accounting department will liaise us with your production department, with your purchasing department, with your marketing department, that they will be in contact with them, you know, whether you're talking about the inventory. Uh, so if uh, the, pro let's say the production department will check the inventory, but they'll also talk about, talk to your accounting department and, you know, the, the inventory section and discuss with them, all right, this much levels I have this many levels probably I need. So how accounting department is going to, you know, sort of uh, be in interacting or communicating with each of these department is something that we covered. All right. So with that, let's move on to today's session, which is all about controls and audits. So internal control system. Now, why do we need internal controls? So in any organization, you have some internal controls in place because you basically want to prevent any error from happening or fraud from occurring. Or if something has already happened, then you of course want to detect it at an early stage. Because if you know you are not able to detect it and probably at a later stage you detect that, then it might be too late. Hence, you have these controls in place. You have an internal control system in place wherein you have some system, uh, policies, procedures which have to be followed. 
uh, one simple example of an internal control, the basic one I would say is segregation of duties. Now that is also an internal control. So basically in one department, let's say, you will say that not one, one person is not responsible for, you know, maybe in uh, keeping the record of the invoice and then also issuing the payments. So you'll probably segregate these duties. So one person is going to record the invoice, probably another person is going to record the payments and another person is probably approving that. So when you segregate these duties, the chances of fraud happening are less now because it is very, you know, sort of uh, difficult that more people are going to collide and do something like that. But if it was only one individual that that person will feel that, you know, there is nobody else doing this work. Only I'm responsible for it. Nobody else is even checking for it. So it might as well do something to benefit from it. So they might steal from the company, whether the assets or cash. And that's why you have certain internal controls in place, basically to prevent any of the shady activities from happening. So let's have a look at the notes. Internal control should help your organizations counter any risk, maintain the quality of their reporting and of course comply with the relevant laws or regulations that are in place. They will provide reasonable assurance that your organization will fulfill their objectives. So if you have a robust, that is a strong internal control system, then as such, you know, you can safely say that that organization will be able to meet with its objectives. An internal control is any action which is taken by your management to enhance the likelihood that established goals and objectives will be achieved. So like I said, if you have a good internal control in place, then as such, your management is sort of going to be happy because they know that the chances of your goals and objectives achieving are, of course, higher. Well, what is the purpose of having an internal control? Now, the purpose of internal control is implied by the definition, right? You are trying to control some policies, procedures, systems, and you want to help management to achieve the objectives of your organization in general. So, if you have internal controls in place, then obviously it is going to ensure that there is orderly and efficient conduct of business. Like I said, if you have good controls in place, then you know that everything is going smooth and you are confident that, you know, nobody is doing something wrong and there is no as such way that someone probably could go ahead and do something wrong. And if someone did also something wrong, you know, you have controls in place and they can detect it. You are safeguarding your assets. Of course, if you have good controls in place, of course, you are safeguarding your assets. Like I said, if you have segregation of duties, as a control, then you know that no one person can probably go ahead and steal from the inventory or the cash of your company because you have many people whose responsibility is to look after that particular, let's say, area. So, hence, you are safeguarding your assets. To prevent and detect fraud and error, of course, now error is something that could happen uninten unintentionally. So when we say error, it's basically you have committed some mistake, but it is unintentional. You didn't want to do that. You were not aware that this was wrong. Fraud, however, is intentional. When you are doing something intentionally in order to, you know, benefit uh, yourself and maybe harming the organization in that course, that will be known as fraud. To ensure that there is accuracy and completeness of your accounting records. Of course, if you have good internal controls in place, then it's sure that your accounting records, basically at the end of the day, whatever goes into your financial statements, we want to show that yes, they are accurate and they are complete. So if you have good internal controls in, uh, in place, then we know the information that is flowing at the end of the day to your financial statements are also accurate and complete. And finally, the timely preparation of your reliable financial information. So if you have internal controls in place, you have nothing to worry about. You know that timely your information, uh, you know, you can timely prepare your financial statements and you ha uh, your, with regards to your all the information that you need, you will get that. Why do companies need internal control? Internal controls like we discussed are there to prevent any risk from occurring or to minimize your impact of risk. Even when controls are in place, we are not saying that things can't go wrong. Even if you have controls in me, there are still very smart people who can do fraud. There are people who might even do some mistakes, right? You know, things can go missing. However, you can catch these things faster as opposed to a system where you, let's say, didn't have internal controls in place. Then you will probably never find out about that fraud or error. Now, we will talk about the components of an internal control system. So, Basically, we will see what 
what are the things that comprise an internal control so we have your control environment you have certain risk assessment processes your information systems that you have in place your control activities and as such you will be continuously monitoring and controlling so all the controls that you have of course you will continuously monitor them also so we will be looking at everything now in detail first one is our control environment so this is the overall context of control particular to your attitude of your directors and managers so your control environment basically talks about that what is the overall attitude uh, among like your managers your directors who are there in your organization how aware are your employees do they know about these control systems and policies and procedures and how important this is to your entity right of course for every entity it is important right to have these internal controls but how you know how seriously you take them how important do you consider is something will make up your control environment the control environment encompasses the management style the corporate culture your values which are shared by your employees it will provide a background again which any other controls are operated so basically it gives a sort of a framework which will you know by judging at that you can see that are your managers and directors really you know bothered about these things do they are they setting the tone from the top if they are telling your employees you know continuously that you know we have to make sure that we have good controls in place and you have to follow them then yes you can make sure that yeah the they are serious about the controls and they want that you have a good control environment however if the directors and managers are only not interested then it's very less likely that your employees will be motivated right because there's nobody motivating them then the control procedures are basically the detailed controls in place so again for example if a control let's say segregation of duty is a control so if that i am putting in place then that uh, the details regarding to that will be your control procedure now your turnbull report on internal control also highlight the importance of information and communication processes so it is very important that you have relevant information and that you are co communicating whether it's with your you know at your same levels or at a higher level or within the department so it uh, highlights the importance of your information and communication processes also the process for monitoring the continuing effectiveness of the system of internal controls what does this mean once i have set up some internal controls it's not that organizations work is here done they won't be like you know managers be like all right we have put internal controls now we are done no you are continuously going to be monitoring the effectiveness of these controls are they actually working or are the are there any loopholes which maybe employees have found out so you need to continuously monitor and upgrade if you know you can if you find out that all right it's not working as it should so it is very important the monitoring part is as important as setting up of these internal controls in the first place nature of your control environment now your turnbull report highlighted a number of elements of a strong control uh, environment so what are the some elements by which you can say that yes this company or this organization has a very strong control environment first one is that you have clear strategies for dealing with significant risk and they have been identified so if as an organization you have identified your significant risk all right you have identified that all right as a company these are my major risk and you have made some strategies to deal with those risk to mitigate those risk then of course you have a good control environment in place your company's culture your code of conduct your policies your reward systems basically supporting this business objective and risk management and internal controls system so basically you should have a culture you know your, your company's culture should foster such behavior wherein you're promoting that yes uh, you know good behavior and using of these internal controls and making sure that everybody is following these policies and procedures then of course you have a good internal uh you have a good control environment your senior management is demonstrating through actions and they are fostering a climate of trust within the company so like i said it's very important that the management sets the tone from the top so if they are only not interested then it will be very difficult for the employees or they will not be doing uh, you know as such following these controls 
so it is important that your senior management is demonstrating a climate and making sure that yes as an organization it is very important for us to have a good control environment to follow these internal controls clear definition of authority responsibility and accountability so that decisions are made and actions are taken by appropriate people basically you have clearly defined let's say in a, a department you will tell all right this supervisor is responsible for this many people he is accountable for this work so when you set up clear lines of authority responsibility and accountability then it is very easy to uh, you know work as in in an organization and this is a sign of a good control environment communication to your employees what is expected of them and the scope of the freedom to act so as an organization you need to communicate to your employees that all right this is what we expect from you if you do not do that if you do not communicate to them how are they supposed to know what does the organization expects so you need to communicate to your employees and also tell them their freedom to act basically how much can they have a liberty to maybe take decisions you will say probably this much and you know after that in certain areas you will say that you can never go ahead and decide and do whatever you want to do on your own you'll always have to probably reach out to a manager for that people in the company having the knowledge skills and tools to support the achievement of your organization objective basically the people that you have they have the required knowledge they are able to understand these controls and they have the skills and tools to perform their work efficiently now we will be talking about the classification of control procedures so control procedures are those policies and procedures in addition to your control environment which you basically establish in order to achieve your objectives as an entity so first one is your administration now these are concerned with achieving the objectives of your organization and with implementing policies these controls will relate to challenge uh, channels of communication and reporting responsibility so under your administration controls you basically want to achieve the organization's objective here you will be specifying the channels of communication you will probably say that all right if a staff wants to communicate he has to go through a channel right he'll probably first they communicate to his senior then the senior can go to the supervisor and then the manager and then so on and so forth so you need to specify the channel of communication and also the reporting responsibility who is responsible for who if a piece of work comes into your department then who is going to take the responsibility who is accountable so that is something your administration control is going to cover next up is accounting now these controls basically aim to provide that the accounting records that you have in place they are accurate and to achieve accountability they apply to your recording transaction and establishing responsibility for record of transaction and assets so in these controls you're basically telling that whatever transactions you are recording it will apply to that and who is responsible for doing that who is responsible for recording these transactions these assets details and whatever and basically you're saying the all the accounting records the information that i'm filling in right that is at the end of the day accurate preventive controls and these are those controls as the name suggests de designed to prevent any error from happening in the first place so in the first place only you don't want anything from happening uh, you don't want something to go wrong and right? so you have these controls in place so that you can prevent anything to go wrong for example checking of invoice from your supplier against the goods received you no know, before paying the invoices so before you pay to your supplier what you're going to do you will check your invoice against the goods received you no know. you will check all right yes 100 units were ordered at 10 dollars you'll check both the the invoice and the goods received you no know. if they both the of them coincide reconcile then you will go ahead and then you'll see all right in the invoice also same amount same quantity is mentioned i can now go ahead and do that if you didn't do this let's say if you didn't do this then probably the amount mentioned in the invoice was higher and you could end up paying higher so here you have you did something wrong right an error occurred but if because you have this control in place which is that you have to check you could prevent it from happening so these are your preventive controls which are designed to prevent the error from happening in the very first place next is detect that is these are designed to detect the error once they have happened now we say the error has happened but now also you have some controls in place to detect that error has happened so that you can probably correct it in a timely manner for example your physical checks of inventory against inventory records 
so probably i have every month end or in every like 20 days or 15 days you will go to your inventory along with your inventory records and you're going to check now this is a detect uh, detect control because let's say you found out that um, 90 is mentioned um, in your records but there are only 80 units left in your inventory so you know 10 is missing so you detected that error and then probably you will find out what happened if you did not have this uh, control in place then you will never be able to find uh, detect that something has gone wrong correct now these are designed to minimize or mitigate the effect of errors an example would be a backup of computer input at the end of the day so basically you are trying to yeah, here negate the effect of error so whatever error has happened and its effect you want to minimize it so probably at the end of the day you are taking a backup of your computer system why are you doing that because let's say tomorrow if i log in and there's some virus at least i have a backup copy and i know that all right i have uh, you know i have a backup copy i don't really need to worry so that's a corrective control discretionary these are the controls which are subject to your human discretion for example checking a signature on a purchase order so if you're checking the signatures on a purchase order to make sure that yes everything was correct that is basically your this is happening which is subject to a human discretion a human is checking it non discretionary will be those controls which are provided automatically by the system and cannot be overridden so as such they are already provided by the system and you cannot override it that is you cannot remove that control as such for example when you go to your atms right uh, cash dispensing machine you put in a pin so that is your non discretionary control that is automatically there you cannot really do anything to hamper it and uh, you know make sure that they, they don't ask the pin they will every time uh, ask the pin next is mandated these controls are required by law and imposed by your external authority so any um, controls which are mandated by your law required by law will fall under this category and finally application controls these controls are used to reduce the risk associated with your computer environment basically application controls will uh, help to prevent detect or correct any errors from happening next we type uh, we'll talk about what are the types of financial control procedures that we have in place so the first one is segregation of duties so for example you will split the roles of let's say your chairman and chief executive you will make sure that same people are not doing the both the work that is you will not say that all right one person is a chairman also or chief executive no one person will be a chairman and another will be a chief executive so these are some types of your financial control procedure like you have segregated your duties or you could have some physical controls that is these are the measures to secure the custody of your assets basically only people who are authorized to move them uh, they will be uh, allowed to do so other people can't go ahead and do that so the, you have sort of secured the custody of those assets there is authorization and approval so all your transactions will require some sort of authorization or approval by an appropriate responsible person and you will set limits for these authorization also for example uh, if it's a small amount probably my supervisor can uh, you know approve it let's say till 50000 dollars but let's say if it's a big amount you know anything above 50000 dollars probably i need to get a authorization and approval from my manager then management should provide control through analysis and review of accounts that is you will do your variance analysis you will do provision of internal audit service supervision of the recording and operations of day to day transaction this will ensure that your individuals are aware that their work will be checked if as such i go to office i do work and i know nobody is checking in then of course i as a human i am not going to focus so much you know after a point of time i pro i maybe with, at the start of the day i'll start with all enthusiasm but by the end of the day probably i would have committed 10 mistakes but if i know that at the end of the day this report is going to be checked by my supervisor then i'll make sure i'll double check and i'll make sure that no error is happening so it's important that you have this uh, supervision in place organization identifying your reporting lines what are the levels of authority and who is responsible for what work this will ensure that everyone is aware of their control and even others responsibility so if you have clearly defined this person's responsibility is this their authority is only this much then everybody knows what their con uh, you know what, uh, what their work is their controls and the responsibility and work even of others 
arithmetical and accounting to check the correct and accurate recording and processing of your transaction basically you can have a reconciliation you have trial balances at the end when you have trial balances you can check that already it agreed so we know that everything that was posted was correct personnel attention should be given when you are selecting training and the qualification of your personnel as well as their personal qualities basically is that person honest or not if you know someone maybe has been fired from an organization for dishonest behavior then it will be really foolish to hire that person uh, and you know give him such responsibilities where you know that in your organization also he can probably commit a fraud so when you are recruiting someone make sure you are selecting the right people you are training them and you are seeing their qualifications internal checks now internal check is basically an element of your internal control which is basically concerned that no single task should be uh, you know done by one person from its start to finish so if there's one task it's not that only one person is assigned to that from its start to finish so each individual work will be subject to an independent check by another person in the course of their other person's duty so let's say if there's one task probably i am doing 50% of this someone is doing 20% of this and someone is doing remaining so that is an important internal check because if let's say only one person was responsible from start to finish to execute a work then the chances of error and fraud occurring are of course higher what are the characteristics of having a good internal control system so if you have a good internal control system in place what are its features that you will have a clearly defined organization structure basically you would have clearly you know um, you will have different operations let's say different departments and they will be separated maybe in divisions and various or you know maybe division a b c and then they will have separate departments you know sales marketing hr officers must be appointed to assume responsibility of their each division you will set up clear lines of responsibility who is responsible for whose work who has who how much authority and there there must be overall coordination of company's activities when these departments are dealing with themselves you know maybe uh, production is talking with purchasing so they will be coordinating the activities another characteristic of a good internal control system is that you have adequate internal checks in place basically you are separating the duties right so if per one person is authorizing the transaction then some other person is probably um, you know has the custody of those assets so it's not that only one person is doing the entire work from start to finish proof measures such as control totals pre list you will have bank reconciliation so for petty cash we saw in our previous session also you will probably at every month probably should do a bank reconciliation to make sure that yes the amounts are correct and nobody is stealing the money acknowledgement of work done persons who carry out a particular job should acknowledge their work by means of either signature or rubber stamp initial so once let's say you cleared an invoice right you checked an invoice so probably you should go ahead and you know there should be some sort of acknowledgement of work done maybe you will uh, sign you will give your initials maybe you will put a rubber stamp that yes approve so that when it goes on to the next level and that person le let's has to authorize it so he knows that all right the person uh, the other person has checked it and i can now go ahead and do my own checks and then approve it it's not that that person came directly to me uh, you know the um, if let's say there's a b c so it's not that a directly went to c there was b in between so let's say b signed his initial so c knows now all right b has also checked that's why you should have probably a system either you could say that you know sign or just put your initials or maybe put, just put a rubber stamp protective devices for physical security so if you have let's say some um, assets or money in a uh, in your organization lying around then probably you should have some protective devices like a lock system or maybe um you know if you have put it in a room then you will have some device protected devices outside probably only few personnel who have access can enter and you they have to enter let's say a pin code or a thumbprint scanner pre review authorization of a transaction should be given after checking that all proper procedures have been carried out so before you authorize let's say a transaction now my super, uh, junior comes or supervisor sends me an uh, email that you need to authorize this payment so i'm just not going to go ahead and authorize it even if it's for a small amount i need to shake, make sure that all the other checks have been done that for uh, proper procedure has been followed post review completed transaction should also be reviewed after they have happened and once let's say i approved and the payment has been made then again someone should do a post review that all right this was the amount this much was uh, asked for this much was approved this much was paid 
an internal audit department should be able to verify the control system is working and to review this system to ensure that it is still appropriate for current circumstances like i said monitoring is also an important part it's not that just that you will put internal controls in place and you will be like oh we are done with it you will continuously monitor because the circumstances continuously change your external environment is continuously evolving what are the limitations on the effectiveness of these internal controls first one is that these internal controls depend on segregation of duties and can be avoided by collusion of two or more people responsible for duties so we basically do segregation of duties so that the chance of uh, fraud happening are less but what if those people let's say you segregated duties between three people and they have now only collided and doing uh, you know fraud that is one of the limitation authorization controls can be abused by the person who has been empowered to authorize those activities maybe one person who has this uh, you know uh, responsibility to authorize maybe he is misusing or abusing his power and management can often override the controls that they have set up themselves mostly in organizations what happens is sometimes the management only overrides the controls which they put in the first place all right next we move on to internal audit and internal control so let's first try to understand what is internal audit so internal audit basically is an department which you will probably have inside your organization so these employees are working in your organization or some organizations also outsource this function internal audit function as such to another organization so this is also something that organizations do or mostly you will have an internal audit department which is inside your organization so these are your only employees however they need to remain independent uh, because if they were not independent then of course they will not be able to conduct the work as objective uh, as it is important right if you are let's say your management is only influencing you and saying that you know uh, give a clean report that yeah everything is fine then as such there is no point of having an internal audit department you have an internal audit department to find out at an early stage before your external auditors come in place any errors or fraud happening so that you can correct that because if let's say external auditors found out about it then it is going to be very difficult because they might modify their audit opinion so let's have a look now so internal audit an independent activity which is established by management to examine and evaluate your organization risk assessment processes systems and make recommendations so what basically your internal audit department does they will set up these internal controls they will document all the procedures policies they will see the organization risk management processes and they will also make recommendations to the uh, management to how to achieve these company objectives they will also continuously monitor and say that yes the internal controls are working fine or probably they will say that no you know there are some issues internal auditors will guide monitor and attempt to improve basically all the processes which you have within an organization hence it is very important to have an internal audit department but again it will depend on also your size of the organization maybe for a large organization of course this is very well important but for a very small organization probably you do not uh, you might not be able to derive the benefit as much as the cost it is to set up that internal department the need for internal audit of course it will depend so your turnbull report says that it will depend like i said the scale diversity and complexity of company uh, company's activity if your company even though it's let's say a small company but they have very diverse and complex activities then probably you need an internal audit department however if you have a small company which ve with very routine and basic transactions nothing much happening then you probably don't need the number of employees that you have cost benefit consideration like i said so you will consider the cost of setting up and the benefit you are deriving so for large organization usually they will be able to you know get the benefit but for a small organization probably it will not be so beneficial but the cost will be more higher changes in your organization structure reporting processes if there are let's say changes any key risk then probably now you need an internal audit so let's say you didn't have an internal audit department but now as an organization you are seeing that you are uh, you know there are some changes in your keyers then probably you need it if there are let's say problems with the internal control system then again you probably need an internal audit department and an increased number of any unexplained or unacceptable event so let's say some error happen or fraud happen unacceptable event happen so now as a company you realize that no we need an internal audit department so that in the future something like this doesn't happen what are the objectives of internal audit so 
here as an internal audit basically you are reviewing the accounting and your internal control system you are examining the financial and operational information you are reviewing that you are as a company the policies and procedures that you have in place are they complying with the laws and the rules and regulations and if there are any other external requirements that we need to probably comply with you will review the safeguarding of assets that yes do we have enough controls in place to ensure that we are safeguarding our assets indication of significant business and financial risk and monitoring the organization's overall risk management policy so as an internal audit your objective is that you are continuously you know looking at what are the business risk what are the financial risk for my organization and uh, is the organization as such able to manage their overall risk you will investigate into any particular areas let's say any suspected fraud so maybe one department has said that you know uh, there has been some missing inventories and we feel some fraud is going on then your internal audit will come into picture and they will investigate into that particular fraud what are the features of internal audit that they need to be independent although like i said it is a part of your organization but it needs to stay independent in order to do its work properly appraisal so appraisal internal audit is concerned with the appraisal of your work done by other people in the organization and internal auditors should themselves not be carrying that work so basically here internal auditors check the work of others right that everyone else is doing properly however they should not be work, doing that work themselves because let's say if they were doing that and then they are only checking then here what you will see a self review threat happening right which we covered in a previous session so hence it is important that whatever work they are checking is the work of others and they are not, no way in themselves involved in doing that work types of audit now we will cover the various types of audit that we have first one is operational audit now this can be concerned with any sphere of your company's activity here your prime objective is basically you are monitoring your management performance at every level so at your strategic level you are uh, seeing how your company is performing at your let's say operational level also you will check that now you are basically here concentrating on the outputs of the system and how efficient basically is your organization now your operational audits are also known as management efficiency or value for money audits so these are also some of its names that uh, by which it is popularly known now your system audit is based on testing and evaluation of your internal controls which you have in your organization so that you can basically rely on these controls so as in when you do a systems audit you are testing and evaluating the various internal controls you have in place you will check whether these controls are actually working or not properly and if they are then you will know that yes we can as a company rely on these things now there are two types of tests that you do here first one is your compliance test basically you will seek evidence that these internal controls are being prescribed uh, are being applied as prescribed so basically in compliance testing you check that okay these were the controls that have to be applied and they have to be applied this this manner so you'll check are they being applied as it has been prescribed and mentioned by your policies and procedures which the internal auditor has set up substantive testing is basically here you are substantive uh, substantiating the entries in the figures in the accounts basically the finally what figures goes into your accounts right let's say your balance sheet the cash figure let's say is 100 million dollars so in substantive testing i'll check that exactly yes the amount should be 100 million dollars and why it should be 100 million dollars i need some evidence for that so i will go ahead and check i'll check with the bank i'll check with the all the preparation so i will then agree that yes 100 million dollar is the correct amount so that is my substantive testing they are used to discover any error and omission because let's say 100 dollar 100 million dollars it let's say 90 million dollars and in my bank statement now i go ahead and check it says 100 so i'll know that oh some error probably has been committed and you know that's why that different amount is coming the key importance of these two type of tests uh, is that if compliance tests reveal that your internal controls are working satisfactorily then your amount of substantive testing can be reduced so what happens in most of the organization if uh, when you do this testing and you see that yes 
your compliance testing has revealed that you have internal controls in place they are working fine they are working satisfactory that means you can rely upon them and if you can rely upon them you know that your figures are probably going to be fine right because the controls are working hence the amount of substantive testing that you need to then conduct will be lower probably you will, will be, your sample size will reduce you will not be checking let's say now each and every item you will just check maybe so some amounts uh, depending upon your materiality that is how big amount is how important that is and the internal auditor can then concentrate the audit effort on those areas where let's say they were not satisfied um, they were not satisfied so if you have good uh, like if in your compliance test you have found out that all right internal controls are working satisfactory then the amount of substantive testing that you have to do will be reduced Next is accountability. Now your internal auditor is accountable to your highest level in your organization. Usually they will be reporting to their audit committee. Now there are three main reasons. The auditor needs access to all parts of the organization. He should be free to comment on the performance of your management. So it's just because they're the employees of the organization. That doesn't mean that they can't, you know, uh, tell about or pinpoint of uh, or maybe disclose to your uh, board of directors that management is doing something not properly. They should be able to comment freely. Your audit report may need to be actioned at the highest level to ensure that it's effective implementation. So at the highest level, probably they will look at it and say that, all right, these are the, let's say, recommendation and then only they will take an action. Next, we move on to external audit. So we covered internal audit. Now, what is external audit? Now, your external audit is, uh, you know, completed or done by a third party. Now, this, um, these auditors, they are not employees of your organization as were in your internal audit. Neither your company is outsourcing this function. No, these are appointed by your shareholders. Now, this could be any big four firm or any audi other auditing firm. So, your external auditors come into place and they will check that whether or not at the end of the day, your financial statements give a true fair view or true and fair view or not now if you have an internal audit department and they are good at the job and they have you know really documented the procedures and they have done a good job then as an external auditor you can rely on them rely on their work and it reduces your work sort of it doesn't mean you will not carry out your own tests and you'll blindly rely on them no of course not because at the end of the day they are the part of your that organization but your work will you know considerably will will be reduced probably the sample size and everything if you know that yes it's a good internal audit department they are objective you will do your test however it will definitely help you, your uh, audit work as such so let's have a look now in detail so external auditing is the independent examination of the evidence from which your financial statements are derived. So at the end of the day, the financial statements that are made. So an auditor, when I was also in audit, we, what we used to do, basically everything that goes into your financial statements, right? Your fixed assets, your um, uh, cash and everything, basically you check how that did the company derive with that figure so you do your own work papers and you find out that yes that was the correct figure you have some documentary evidence you'll have invoices probably to support that so that is something what the external auditor does in order to give your readers uh, the statement confidence that the, they are truth and fair basically when these are disclosed you are saying that yes the financial statements give a true and fair view and as per us we don't feel anything is wrong and whatever test we have done we are happy with it to say that yes it gives a true and fair view so an external auditor will be doing a, their own independent examination now what are the differences between your internal audit and external audit let's have a look at that so your internal audit will advise management on whether the organization has sound system of internal controls to protect basically organization from any loss or to prevent or detect any error or fraud. Your external audit, however, will provide an opinion to the stakeholders on whether these financial statements are giving a true and fair view. So your external audit is not going to tell management that, you know, these controls are not working well as such. And, uh, you know, this is something that you should be doing. At the end of the audit, you know, some external auditors do give some sort of recommendations. Like, uh, let's say they have conducted an audit, they will probably uh, recommend that, you know, these things is something that you can as an organization look into, uh, maybe to your management or to the shareholders. But as such, that is not their work that if they are doing that's additional, their work is just to provide an opinion on the 
truthfulness of your financial statement but your internal audit department is to see whether your internal control systems are working properly and you know uh, if there are any changes that needs to be done reporting to now your internal audit reports to the board of directors or others charged with the governance such as basically your audit committee committee however your external auditors report to the shareholders that is members of a company or your owners of the company relating to your internal audit works relate to the operations of your organization right but your external audit work relates to the financial statements only they are concerned with the financial records that basically underlie these so they just care the financial statements what are the figures coming how are they coming what are the evidence they do not care about the operations relationship with the company internal auditors are very often your employees of the organization although like i said some organizations can outsource this function also external auditors are always your independent of your company and management they will be appointed by the shareholder this will be an independent third party which is appointed by your shareholders now relationship between external and internal audit so coordination between your external and internal auditors of an organization will minimize duplication of work and uh, you know will also give an opportunity to cover wide areas so if you are coordinating if you both these departments are coordinating like like i said uh, if the external auditor sees that all right internal auditor has done something uh, well they have checked these things then probably i don't have to do that maybe it was even for a very you know some areas which are very uh, not even material so this will minimize the duplication of work and they can then probably focus on some other area hence your uh, you know scope of uh, audit your coverage of audit issues uh, that is wider so coordination should have the following feature that you have periodic meetings to plan the overall audit to ensure adequate coverage so periodically your external auditors will be meeting internal auditors to make sure that you know this is how the audit is going and they'll plan that already this is now go is going to be a step further moving further we're going to do that periodic meeting to discuss any matters of let's say mutual interest maybe both are so somewhat concerned in a particular area so they will be discussing that mutual access uh, to audit programs and working papers so all the working papers let's say the internal auditors that they have the external auditors will also get access to that you know if you are have a good relationship you are coordinating then you will can get access to all of that exchange of audit reports and management letter and co common development of let's say any audit techniques methods and terminology so when you're working together you'll probably discuss that all right this is how it is done this is how it could be done and you'll discuss some audit techniques and methods assessment by external auditor now where your external auditors want to rely or they wish to rely on the work of your internal auditor then these external auditors also need to assess the internal audit function as part of the system of internal control so because if let's say now the external auditor uh, knows that okay this company has an internal audit department now but it will not just blindly rely on their work so there are some things that he, that in you know your external auditor will have to consider before they are taking the internal auditor's word for it so basically they will check the organizational status that is internal audit specific status in the organization you they'll see that as such in this organization can the internal audit department actually remain objective are they really independent from the organization if they feel that no they are not really then you will probably not rely on them because you'll know then their management has sort of influenced their work external auditor should consider any constraints or restrictions placed on internal audit scope of the function the nature and extent of the assignment which in internal auditor has performed external auditor should also consider whether management and directors act on these recommendation that internal auditors found so let's say um, you know internal auditors made some recommendation to the management that these things are not working so well let's change it so in external auditors will see whether or not the management actually you know took their advice or not technical competence they are also going to check are the that internal audit department that they have uh, how many people are there and what are the qualifications if they'll see that yes people are qualified they are actually chartered accountants or, or you know they are certified internal auditors they have completed let's say cia which is a professional course then you know that all right they have that competence 
if they do not have any such competence or maybe they are not qualified then probably you would not want to rely due professional care when your internal audit is is properly uh, work work is properly planned supervised reviewed and documented then the existence of adequate adequate manuals working papers may be considered uh, considered so if the external auditors can see that you know actually the internal auditors have done a good job they have properly documented each issue and each work paper then you will be happy to rely on that next we move on to it system security and safety now security basically means that you are protecting data from any accidental or any deliberate threat which can happen which could lead to let's say modification or destruction of data that's why you want to secure your data so that accidentally nobody you know destroys or, or changes the data or deliberately maybe someone wants to do some fraud now what are the physical threats physical threats to security could be natural or man made that is you have fire and if you fire is a very of course serious hazard to your computer system and that's why you should have a fire safety plan most of our organizations even when i was working in a big four in both the big fours actually we used to have uh, fire drills so wherein any day you know one day they'll just play the fire alarm and it will be a drill and we'll have to uh, perform the exact procedure which we would be doing if in case it was an actual fire then there is water then to deal with this you should have probably waterproof ceilings you know so that to avoid flooding weather wind rain storms all of these can cause damage to your building especially if you are in that area where there are chances of typhoons happening lightning uh, and electrical uh, storms can uh, you know disrupt your power supply that is then it's important that you have some system in place that is to have a backup of power terrorist activity political terrorism is the main risk but there are also uh, threats from some individual that could be holding any grudges so for to, in order to you know deal with that probably you have some physical security like when you are entering your business organization you know company many organizations even we had this they check our bags through scanners we pass through metal detectors and only if we have an employee card then only we can swipe and the gate opens otherwise you can't really enter accidental damage now pe people are a physical threat to computer installation there can be few of us who at the time let's say we i split uh spilled uh coffee let's say in my la on my laptop or any office equipment so any accidental damage can happen or let's say i tripped over uh when i was walking in the uh, factory so that's why it's important to have a good layout in order to eliminate any such accident or hazards from happening and uh, with regards to the coffee thing some organizations have a strict policy that you know on your desk you should not be taking on any drinks or food um so even when i was working in kpmg we had uh, uh, drinks were still allowed but food was a specific no no and drinks also we were always asked that you know make sure you're always having it carefully otherwise it was always promoted that you have it in your breakout area your cafeterias rather than on your desk because you can of course you are human you know you can spill it and you know unnecessarily why do you want to damage it physical access control now physical access controls are designed to prevent the intruders getting near your computer equipment or storage media basically uh if there is one particular place where everything is stored you will probably guard it right you could have uh, your outside working hours security guards that can help human access so let's say after working hours every employee will go home right but uh, you will still have some security guards who are not there in the day time you know outside working hours to protect and to make sure that you know no employee maybe some people stayed back to maybe enter and you know do something wrong you will have door locks which can be used frequent uh, where frequency of use is low so in a particular room where you don't go so often but there are important you know documents kept or the systems are kept there you can probably lock it locks can be combined with you could have a keypad system that you will have to enter let's say a code you have a card entry system that only if you have a card you will swipe in and go so only few people can be given authority or you could have a thumbprint system you know retina scanners are also there these days and you could have intruder alarms that if somebody enters uh, who has let's say not uh, you know who's not supposed to be there an alarm can go off building controls into an information system now it is possible that you can build these controls in a computerized information system so you have your 
security controls these are there to mitigate the risk of data which includes basically human error that is you have let's say entered incorrect transactions or you are failing to correct the errors any technical errors that could be happening because let's say my hardware or software malfunctions so these are all related to your security controls any related to your national disaster any deliberate action of fraud or a, let's say a cyber attack happening uh, about which we'll be covering uh, in the future in detail in this session only next is integrity controls now your data integrity is the context of security is preserved when your data is same as in the source documents basically here you're telling whatever data was there in your source document that cannot be now accidentally or intentionally either altered destroyed or even disclosed so if you have data integrity it's basically in context of saying that the security of your source document is preserved so let's say i uploaded some invoices so i'll have a system in place make sure that nobody can really just come in and alter that invoice or either accidentally or even intentionally if they wanted to do something wrong then you have system integrity which will refer to systems operation operation conforming to the design specification uh, even though you will have some system in place wherein you know the design there is a design in a way that you can't really change the procedures even either deliberately or again accidentally because you want to let's say may, uh, be wanted to behave incurrently and do wrong work then you have input controls which will ensure the accuracy completeness and validity of the inputs that you're putting in your system you could have data verification wherein you can match from your source documents you can have data validation involves like you can have various checks depending on your data type you can have check digits which is a digit calculated by the program and added to the code which is being uh, you know validated you can have control totals for basically let's say i'm doing some entries now i know that uh, you know i can make batches of this or at one point of time in one document only 100 uh, entries I'm doing so I can do a batch total that all right I'm doing 100 100 and at the end of the day I'll probably do the total and make sure that all right let's say 3000 entries came so that many batches I have hash total a system generated total which can be used to check processing has been performed as you wanted it to happen you can have range check now what is range check let's say in your financial statements when you are preparing it you know we prepare it on a systems uh, I know that the minimum amount, let's say, is 5,000 and the maximum is 999. So, everything, every amount that is going, let's say, in my PNL or balance sheet is between this amount. So, I can do a range check that, all right, it should be between this to this. If, let's say, there was an amount 10,200 somewhere in your financial statement coming. Now, if I did a range check, I'll get a pop-up that, you know, this then satisfied this amount is coming so i'll go back and i'll check why this amount is coming then probably i'll realize oh maybe i made an error it, instead of 10200 it should be 1020 one zero was extra so you have these checks to see uh, the range between the few numbers limit check is also similar but this is for an upper limit well, let's say it could be less than if you want to check this number anything but for, for upper limits then you have processing controls now they are also there to ensure your accuracy and completeness of your processing so input controls for your inputs processing controls for your processing programs should be subject to development controls and to rigorous testing periodic running of test data is also recommended so you will be periodically testing these data output control will be there to of course check and ensure the accuracy and completeness and security of the output that finally comes in basically investigation and follow-up error reports or any exception reports you will do batch controls you will control over your distribution copying of output or you could label your discs and tape which what basically output that you maybe you have um, you know uh, put it on your disk let's say a hard disk or anywhere you can label that backup control a backup and archive strategy should include that you are regularly backing up your data at least daily you have archive plans and a disaster recovery plan so backup basically means you are making a copy of your work whatever you've done in anticipation of future failure a backup copy of a file will be a dub duplicate copy which will be kept at a separate place from the original so not even in the same location because let's say if there was a fire and everything is destroyed so at least i have a backup copy somewhere else and i can 
take that and then start again working. The purpose of backing up data is to ensure that your most recent usable copy of data can be recovered in case there was a disaster happening. Archiving. Now, what is archiving? Uh, it is also similar concept. It is the process of moving the data from your primary storage to let's say a hard disk or any portable media storage. Now, even when I was working in audit, you know, after every audit, we used to archive the audit because, you know, once it is done and it's locked, now you will not make any changes. You have, let's, uh, you know, finally you have made sure that all right, this is the amount, these are the work papers. Now you don't want anyone to make changes. So you will archive the entire audit and it will move to another place. And probably next year I can go ahead and look at it if I'm uh, this year also doing the same audit just to see how I worked on it. So this is something which we used to do and in audit it is very usual practice. Archiving provides a legally acceptable business history while freeing up your hard disk. Archive can be used to recover from your site wide disaster and if any disaster happened, you at least have an archive of that audit or any information. Passwords and logical access system. Now, a password will be a set of characters which may be allocated to a person and you will have these controls in place so that, you know, some unauthorized person can't circumvent or enter through your systems. Uh, a logical access system can prevent the access to your data and program files by basically you can identify the user, checks on your user authority and authentication of the user identity. Now, what is an audit trail? Audit trail is basically a record showing who has accessed the computer system and what operation he or she has basically performed. Again, when I was working in audit, we had a software called e-audit. So when we used to work in that, uh, you know, audit really something is very important. So let's say I worked on cash work paper. Cash is being, uh, you know, given to me as my responsibility. My manager has said, you will, Disha, I will work on cash. Now, I worked on cash, I did my work paper and then I am out, right? Next day, I open just to see that, you know, uh, maybe my, I want to check my manager has reviewed or not because that can also come. You can sign as a preparer reviewer. Now, I check. Uh, however, in the audit trail, I can see that, you know, at this particular date and time, someone else, uh, let's say ABC, modified it. So, I'll be like, why did that person modify it? Cash is my work, right? So then I can go and, you know, ask that person that, hey, did you open my work paper? Why did you open? What changes did you make? So audit trail is important and as such, because everyone is usually, in, in, when you're doing an audit, you know, allocated a particular task. So it is important that you are, you are, you know, you are taking the, its responsibility. And, you know, if, let's say something went wrong and if I didn't have this audit trail and my re manager reviews it, they'll say that, uh, you know, Disha, this is something that you have done wrong. And I'll be like, no, I didn't do wrong. And they'll be like, but you worked on it, right? But now I know that, you know, ABC modified it. So I can then get back to say my manager and say that, hey, I did it correct. This person modified it. So that's why it is important to have these audit trails. Let's have a look. So audit trails are useful for both maintaining your security and also recovering any lost transactions. Contingency controls. A contingency is any unscheduled uh, interruption of your computing services. So you have these contingency plans in place so that if something goes wrong, you know what has to be done in case of a disaster. Disaster recovery plan. Any disaster recovery plan must provide for your standby procedures. Uh, if let's say your normal services were disrupted, then what are the procedures? What has to be done then? Your recovery procedures once the cause of breakdown has been discovered. So you know that this is the cause of breakdown. Maybe power failure was the reason. Now recovery procedures. How will you again uh, go back? Personal management policies to ensure that the both A and B are implemented properly. What are the contents of a disaster recovery plan? A disaster recovery plan must cover all the activities from your initial response to a disaster through the damage limitation and full recovery. So in a disaster recovery plan, basically it will have all the activities from the initially how you respond it to till the time that disaster happened. Now the responsibility should be clearly split. Next, we move on to cyber risk, cyber attack and cyber security. This is also very important. Cyber risk is a term that covers a number of your organizational risk and the possible consequences of a cyber attack. What is a cyber attack? Basically, an attempt by someone to gain an unauthorized access to, let's say, your 
computer system or maybe in your uh, any computer network cyber attacks will aim to disable disrupt or either alter any of your data or manipulate or steal the data from your organization cyber security is the protection of these computer systems from the risk of any cyber attack happening so you don't want of course a cyber attack to happen that someone manipulates or hacks your system or steals data that's why you'll have some cyber security in place whether hardware or software security you will have some procedures and controls now what are the various types of cyber attacks that we see that usually happen first one is phishing now this is the fraudulent practice of sending out emails purporting to be the from your reputable companies in order to let's say get some credit card information or any personal information so what happen here you will get an email and it will seem like this is coming from a legit source that you know it is actually coming from that organization but actually it is not coming from that company and you might you know uh, give on your credit card number for example let's say you get an email from amazon saying that you know you know you have won a cash back so we need your credit card number now the email will be drafted in such a format that you will feel that yes it has actually come from amazon but actually it would have not come from amazon so that's phishing farming is a form of cyber attack that is going to send you now onto a fake website so you will type in the you know uh, url when you're typing you will type the legitimate website but it will be um, you know uh, automatically taking you to a fake website wherein you might put in your details and again you could be uh, facing an attack the user will type a legitimate web address will but will be redirected to a fake website that is going to resemble the real website basically will not even come to know that all right this is a fake one hacking is an attempt to exploit a computer system or a private network uh, inside a computer simply put unauthorized access so when you say someone has hacked my computer or someone you say you know someone has hacked my facebook account or uh, gmail account what really we say that you know someone has gained an unauthorized access to it webcam manager now the cyber attack users um, they can take control of your webcam that you have either on your laptops or if you have an independent webcam cyber security methods now you can have access control some firewalls internet gateways and virus protection so in order to you know make sure that you know there's no uh, intrusion happening you can have all this in place that's why you should have always good anti virus in place cloud computing and accounting now cloud computing is the practice of using a network of remote servers hosted on the internet basically to store your data manage your data process your data this is the practice of using an accounting system that can be accessed through the internet now example of a cloud is something uh, you know we have a drop boxes on a phone we have an app drop box wherein you can you know save your files your information everything this is something that you can access not only from your phone but even from your laptop because it's on a cloud it's not really saved onto your laptop that all right all that data let's say pictures you have saved that it you can only access from computer i can access from my computer from my phone or anywhere i just have to probably put my email id and password because it's in a cloud it's not in a particular hardware or uh, you know on a computer some accounting systems just sit on one computer so some system accounting system will be just on your laptop and you can access only from there they are called your desktop accounting system because cloud accounting systems are internet based so cloud and when you say something is on the cloud it is on the internet and otherwise you have on your desktop all right so with this we finish the session and this is a fairly important session so you can expect a couple of mcqs from here now we will be looking at some questions but in the question marathon we will be doing many more questions but for now we will be just looking at few mcqs example 1 which of the following would be classified as a contingency control in an information system a password only access to system system recovery procedures or audit trail so the system recovery procedures basically you have um, they are there if there was let's say an event of a breakdown so that is if something like that happen that's a worst case scenario that could could happen so that's a contingency control all right example 2 in the context of audit where what are your substantive tests designed to accomplish to establish whether internal controls are being applied as prescribed that is actually compliance testing and not substantive testing 
to identify errors and omission in your financial controls to establish the cause of errors or to establish an audit trail so substantive testing is basically to identify any errors or omission that could be happening in your financial records so the correct answer here is b example 3 in context of data security controls dash or records showing who has accessed a computer system and what operations he has or she performed so i just discussed about that gave an example this is known as an audit trail so the correct answer here is b audit trail example 4 external auditors have no interest in the internal controls of the organization they are auditing is this statement true or false definitely false of course they have an interest in the internal controls they'll see how well are the internal controls because on that it will depend how rigorous ha have to be their procedures so this statement is false and the final example h is preparing a receivables ledger reconciliation to check for any errors or fraud that may have occurred the month what type of uh, control is this example of is this preventive is this detective corrective physical now since he is prevent um, you know he is uh, making a reconciliation so probably he'll be able to detect any error so this is a type of detective reconciliation check for errors of fraud that have already occurred will be detective in nature because only when something has occurred you can detect it and you make reconciliation so you and you're checking only then you'll come to know that oh this is something wrong going on so that is detective control all right so with this we finish this session and the questions now what we are going to do is quickly revise i have a quick small recap of today's session so that you all are well versed with it and then you can go ahead actually and revise yourself so that at the end of it you are you know sure that you remember everything clearly so today we talked about control security and audit where we tried to understand what is an internal control system so why do organizations have these so you have these internal controls in place in order to achieve your organization goals at the end of the day so here you are making sure if you have internal controls that you will have an orderly efficient activities going on you're safeguarding your assets you're preventing and detecting any error or fraud from happening and you'll ensure that there is timely pre preparation of your financial information now what are the components of internal control we saw that we have a control environment which is the overall context the attitudes the behavior the organization's culture towards the controls in general the directors the management's their behavior then control procedures are the basic controls that you have in place the details with regard to that nature of control environment we saw that you need to have clear lines of authority company's culture should be incorporating that management should set the tone from top people should have the required skills and knowledge then we saw the various types of controls you have admin controls they are there you know relating to your channels of communication you have accounting controls to making sure that you have accurate accounting records you have preventive controls to make sure any error from happening you want to prevent any error from happening you have detective controls when an error, any error has happened now you want to detect that corrective controls you have discretionary non discretionary controls and mandatory controls mandated controls which are you know uh, mandated or required by your law then we saw the types of financial control procedures you could have segregation of duties you can have some physical sort of a security going on uh, supervision through by your management and identifying the reporting lines then we talked about internal checks now these are element of your internal control where you say that no one person should be doing one task from start to finish you need to separate the responsibilities the duties then we talked about the characteristics of having a good internal control system which is that it is a clearly defined organization structure you will have adequate internal control uh, checks in place and then we talked about internal audit now this is an independent uh, part of your organization or you could have outsourced it and the need for internal audit will depend upon the scale the complexity of the activities that you have the cost benefit consideration if there are any changes in your key risk then we talked about the objectives in internal audit why do you do that basically you want to review your inter, uh, all the internal control systems the policies the procedures you want to review the safeguarding of your asset identify any significant risks 
features of internal audit they need to be independent and appraisal that is they should not be checking their own work right they are appraising others work types of audit we talk about operational audit which are also known as value for money or management audits system audit which uh, consists of your compliance test this is basically you seek evidence that the internal controls are being applied as they were prescribed and you have substantive test to make sure that whatever figures that are going into your accounts are correct to discover any error or omissions then we talked about external audit which is basically the independent examination which is done by a third organization third party another organization we saw the differences between the two internal audit and external audit external auditors are basically concerned with the overall financial statements giving a true and fair view they will be reporting to the shareholders of the company then we talked about assessment by external auditors in order if they want to rely on the work of internal auditors they will do their own some assessments they will check their organization status uh, whether they are technically competent or not do they have that you know sort of knowledge uh, and qualifications then we talked about the it system security that you can have physical threats like water fire lightning and you have uh, physical access controls in place you know you could have door locks uh, security guards to make sure no unauthorized person is entering your uh, premises then we talked about security controls and integrity controls and input controls wherein you want to ensure the accuracy completeness of the input that basically whatever input you are putting in your system similarly processing controls the processes and output controls you want to ensure that they are accurate and the output is accurate and complete then you have backup controls and archiving which is basically the process of moving your data from your primary storage to another hard disk then you have passwords in place to make sure again no unauthorized access is there or anyone can circumvent audit trail basically showing who has access that computer system what operations work they have done this is important to maintain security and as well to recover any lost transactions then we talked about the cyber attack cyber security cyber attack is basically an attempt to gain an unauthorized access and cyber security is basically protection of your system from these attacks from happening we talked about various types of cyber attack phishing where you are getting an email which seems to be from a legitimate business farming you are taken to a website which uh, is fake but uh, you even though typed a legitimate web address hacking someone has you know um, sort of taken access uh, and to your computer system and webcam manager they can use a software to take control of your webcam then we talked about cloud computing now it is a practice that you are storing your data and you have remote servers on a internet uh, you know storage and you're managing from there so basically you can access that from anywhere wherever you have internet from any system but as such if you're working if you have your uh, all your information or data just stored on one system then it is known as your desktop accounting system all right so with this we finished today's session wherein we learned so much about internal controls and the various type of audits i will now see you in the next session till then this is disha chauhan signing off